Hi, a lot of the kids I'm tutoring these days are doing optimization problems. They have to create their own equation that they take the derivative of in order to maximize or minimize some arbitrary thing like time or total distance traveled, or in this case, cost. Here, we have a cylinder that needs to hold two liters. That's 2000 centimeters cubed. The top and bottom of the cylinder are going to be made out of material that costs 30 cents per centimeter squared, and the sides cost just 10 cents per centimeter squared. We want to figure out the dimensions of a cylinder that holds this volume that minimizes the cost according to these parameters. Now you might already realize that since the sides cost less, it's better for us to make more height than width because the larger the top and bottom are, the more expensive it's going to be. I mean, that's true for the sides as well, but a factor of three less. So let's draw ourselves a cylinder so we can picture what's going on here. Now, we want an equation for the total cost. Now the cost here is going to be dependent on the total surface area of the top and bottom, and also separately the sides. The tops and bottoms of a cylinder are circular. They will be pi r squared each, because that's the area of a circle. But there are two of them. And the total surface area of the sides is going to be actually just one rectangle. If you cut this open, if you cut the cylinder open down this line here and unfurled it, it would undo itself to reveal a rectangle. The rectangle has a height of h, but the length of the rectangle is the circumference of the circle. That's 2 pi r times that height, which was h. This is the formula for the surface area of any cylinder. The difference and change I'm going to make here is that the top and bottom material cost 30 cents per centimeter squared. So I'm going to multiply those circle areas by the price. And I'm going to multiply the, the, the sides, the, the rectangle that's been curled into a cylinder to make the sides. I'm going to multiply it by that area. So I have an equation for cost, but the problem is that I have both two variables here, r and h. We need it down to a single variable if we're going to take the derivative, grade 12 style. That's where the given volume comes in. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, that's area of the base, times the height which means that h is 2,000 over pi r squared. Let me t emphasize what I'm doing here. I'm creating an equation that I know is true based on the given information, and then I'm using that to isolate for one of the letters. I could have isolated for r here. This would have been r equals the square root of 2,000 divided by pi h. But I didn't because I don't want to deal with square roots right now. Instead, I want to have this expression for h, which I will take and plug in to this expression. c equals, I'm going to clean this up a bit, that's 0 0.6 pi r squared plus 0 0.2 pi r times h, but h is 2000 over pi r squared. There's going to be some more cleaning up I can do here. There's a pi here and a pi here that cancel out. I can cancel out that r with that r, and so my cost function as a function of only r is now 0 0.6 pi r squared plus, uh, I believe that's 400 over r. All right, so this is a cost function dependent only on one variable, r. To minimize cost, you take the derivative and you set that equal to zero. So. C prime, oh, that pen is not going to work. Let's try another one. C prime, which I'm going to set equal to zero is, power rule, bring the two down, that's 1.2 pi r, and the derivative of this is going to be minus 400 over r squared. If you don't know how I did that so quickly, 
in my mind, I rewrote it as plus 400r to the negative 1. I took the negative 1, brought it down, and notched it down by 1 to make it minus 400r to the negative 2. Then I rewrote it with the r squared on bottom. Yes, that's how I did it. I have to set this equal to 0 and solve for r. That will give me the radius that minimizes cost. So, I'm going to move this over to the other side. I end up with 400 over r squared equals 1.2 pi r. If I rearrange this, I'm going to bring the 1.2 pi over to the other side and the r squared over to this side. So I got 400 over 1.2 pi equals r cubed. And to solve for r, I just take the cubed root of that number. Now this is a nice exact answer, but it's pretty ugly. So, I'm just going to get the real answer on my own. I'm going to type cube root of 400 over 1.2 pi, and I end up with a radius of 4.734 centimeters. 4.734 centimeters will be the radius of the circle that makes the top and bottom. It's actually pretty small, especially when we want a total volume of 2,000 centimeters cubed. And then to find the height that that corresponds to, I just plug that into the H formula we found over here. That's 2,000 over pi times that number squared. That sounds like a job for my calculator as well. I'm going to square that answer, multiply it by pi, and then do 2,000 divided by that number. I get a height of 28.41405 centimeters. Cool! So, what I've solved for here is the fact that we want a cylinder that's very tall. The radius is only 4.7 centimeters, so the diameter is only 9.4 centimeters. And the total height is a 28.4 centimeters. It is much taller than it was wide because the sides are cheaper to make than the top and bottom. And finally, just to make sure I've done this right, I'm going to calculate the volume of this cylinder. The volume is pi times radius squared times height, 28.4. I get 1,999.5. That's close enough to 2,000, and we're good to go. Pretty sweet. Optimization problems are all about getting the initial equation down to a single variable so that you can take the derivative of it and set it equal to zero to solve for that variable. That's how it goes. Optimization rules, you rule. Best of luck.